Hi, everybody. It's Veronica here. Uh, we just had a tiny bit of a technical issue, but we're we're raring to go now, so everything's good. Um, do you hear me, Amanda? Yep, you're good. Okay, and I know that Lynn, you hear me, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm double checking. So, all right, good. Um, Lynn is, um, I want to give you a mini introduction about Lynn. And she's an animal spirit talker, healing through animal communication. So Lynn believes that the through the animals, we transform the human race. I think that's lovely. Um, Big lover of animals. I know that many of you there are, and I'm sure many of you have animals yourself. So I'm going to allow Lynn to just grace us with her beauty and her magic today about the world of animals and spirit communication. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Veronica. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice you're welcome. To be here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, would you like me to begin? Sure, if you'd like, that's fine. Okay, so I am a telepathic animal communicator. Um, I have been talking to the an animals mindfully since 2003. Um, I think when I when I was a child, I did um, speak with the animals then too, but I didn't have a, a mentor or anybody to uh, uh, to talk to uh, about this, so I, uh, I turned off the, the gift. I just shut, kind of shut it down. But um, in 2002, I met my mentor, Rebecca Moravec, who lived in uh, Southern Wisconsin, and I live in, I live in Door County, Wisconsin, so uh, north, Northeastern Wisconsin. Um, and uh, in 2002, I met her, and um, she was uh, my Reiki teacher, animal communication teacher, and shamanic journey work teacher from 2002 until 2014 when she passed. So I did have a lot of um, teaching. Um, in 2014, I became um, an animal communicator as a full-time job. And so that's when um, Animal Spirit Talker was born. So I've been doing mm -hmm. that um, full time now since uh, 2014 and, and loving it. I have clients all over the country and a few overseas. Um, so it's been a fab, it's a fabulous journey. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, um, you know, when I heard you, uh, we spoke a while ago and you told me a bit of your story, which I found to be absolutely fascinating. Um, because there are so many ways that we can communicate with our an animals, but I know that you are, you're metaphysical, so, but you're clairvoyant, um, you're, you're clairaudient, mm -hmm. and you're, there's another one too, right? There's four, um, clairsentience and um, claircognizance. So one is about feelings, clear feeling, and one is about clear sensing or knowing, knowing something is true, so. Mm -hmm. mm. So, go ahead. When um, so there are so many elements to this because I'm dealing with with loss, but I also really want people to know more about the work that you do in general. Let's say that um, somebody has an issue with a behavioral problem that they're having with their animal. And the, the animal is behaving very differently from the way it normally does. Or it, it's coming from a shelter because many people are now uh, getting their animals from shelters. Um, what would you, how would you approach that, first of all? Okay. Well, I have my clients, um, first I have them schedule on my website. And then I also have them um, fill out a pre-session questionnaire. Um, before before we get on on the phone or on Zoom, um, I like to know as much about the animals as I can, um, so that uh, when when we're talking, I have a good base for um, our conversation. So I am a communicator um, rather than a, a not a mind reader. Okay, so I'm also a Reiki master teacher, and so a lot of times I'll use Reiki. Um, uh, when I'm um, talking to the animals to soothe them. Um, I do a lot of work with emotional issues. Um, 
um, uh, so animals, yeah, when uh, a lot of rescue animals, uh, I, I do a lot of work with them. And um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay. you, you said you work, you've worked with a lot of different animals and um, that you do different types of communicating because you're not a mind reader. So I was thinking that um, the messages that you get, how do they come to you? Oh, okay. So I, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, the way I work uh, and how I get started. Um, because we can, we all have these metaphysical senses, so we are all able to speak with the animals. So it's a matter of realizing it and, and knowing how, how, you know, when we're actually doing it. So I look at, I will have the animals photograph. Um, I'll look at the, their photograph, close my eyes. Um, visualize the photograph in my mind's eye, state my intention is to speak with and use their name. Um, and, and when I see them animated or moving in my mind's eye, I know I have a connection. And from there we have a conversation similar to what you and I are doing. Um, and so I will either see pictures in my mind's eye, um, uh, so clairvoyance. I will either, I can, a lot of times I'll hear their voices back in its back, uh, kind of behind my physical ear rather than my mind chatter that goes across the top of, you know, I think, you know, my, my normal, um, uh, my normal thoughts kind of go across the front here. When I'm talking to the animals, it's back here somewhere in a different place in my brain. Um, and I'll hear their voices, but they sound um, more childlike uh, and innocent than my normal adult mind chatter. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes, though, I hear them as a male voice rather than a female voice, which is, has, it, well, it's, it's, so now it feels normal, but at first it was kind of disconcerting, you know. <laughs> um, um, and then sometimes I feel their feelings. Um, so Aww. that's uh, uh, clear, either a clear, cog clear clock cognizance. I have to look. I don't have my notes in front of me when I teach. When I teach, I have it. I have. I know what they all are. Um, uh, but it's a clear feeling and um, clear sensing. Sometimes I just know in my belly, in my gut, that where that something is true. So, so when you have, um, let's say you have this rescue animal that you're working with, um, what are the sort of messages that would come from an animal that has been uh, rescued? What sort of things have you come across? Okay, a lot of times they're they're frightened. Um, uh, they and so a lot of times they'll come with um, their own their own baggage, their um, fear of abandonment. A lot of them have a fear of abandonment. Um, they they want and they a lot of times they'll wonder what they did wrong in their old their wow. other house and why why they you know their other people why did their other people let them go? Um, they feel like they kind did like something wrong. So it's kind of like a child's emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, how sad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I let them know that um, they did, you know, that, that they're with their new people now and, and their new people want to keep them forever and ever. Um, mm -hmm. I, do a, I do work with them um, just it's very similar to the way I would work with a child. Um, let them know that they are safe um, and, and that they will always have food and they will have, you know, they will have love and they will be uh, well cared for. Um, and then, um, I, I, a lot of times I do Reiki with them. Or I'll ask them what their life was like before. Uh, there's sometimes when there's trauma, uh, a lot of the, the rescues that I talked to have had trauma. Uh, they may have been abused or neglected. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, I'll take them back um, and do uh, a, a, a soul retrieval uh, where we can go back and, and see what happened, view it, but not, we don't have to relive it. We can view it and see what was left behind. Um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, the most recent one I did, their curiosity, they, their curiosity was left behind. And so oh. they, they didn't know how to play anymore. Oh. They left their curiosity. It was a, a little dog and, and, and he left his curiosity there. So we, um, so we go back to that place and I saw the, his curiosity as soul fragments. So at first it looked like little shards of glass and then the glass turned into diamonds. So oh, I knew that wow. was part pieces of his soul, you know, the sadness that he had left. Wow. Um, so we um, uh, did a soul retrieval and, and, re and reconnected him with, with those pieces. Um, and instead of feeling sadness i started feeling his love his open opening of his heart um and then um we blessed that place we needed to we couldn't uh, dismantle it because one of his people was still there needing to if, if they do a, a spiritual kind of journey or heal whatever it is any kind of healing work um, they may go back to that place, whether they know it or not. You know, I don't know how other people will do that. Um, but so we couldn't dismantle it because they need it. We we don't want to take that opportunity away from somebody else to heal. Um, oh, and so we placed extra angels there um, wow. for in that space for the human, for his human. Um, and so it was a, a kind of a guided meditation for the human, for his human, his new human, and for um, for the dog. Uh, um, and so, and and the the pe humans, the people will tell me that you know their dog. This in this case, he laid down. He was very calm instead of his normal antsy moving around and barking and. He was very calm, and the and and she reported that the next several days he was, you know, very very calm. Um, so sometimes it's permanent healing. Sometimes, well, it's always a permanent healing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's more to do. Uh, just like people, you know, um, there's always we always keep we just keep moving forward in our healing. Um, so, so that's something that I do with the animals, and it's always guided. I never know what I don't go into any um, any session with a, a mode, you know, an ulterior motive. What I'm going to do this with the animal? It's always it's always guided. So I ask my guides, what do we need to do? How can I help? Um, you know, and and so on. Do you think that there is? Um because I know when I was in the very first part of my healing, uh, me, my husband would bring my dog into the hospital and she knew exactly where my room was. And it was a very circuitous path to get there. And it was on separate, it was on a very high floor in uh, this major medical center. And it wasn't easy to find my room, but she knew after the first time exactly where to go. And he would put her on my bed and she would stay there. And I felt so comforted by that. Mm -hmm. So, and the same thing is true when I am home, you know, she actually sleeps with us. And I was thinking, um, you know, whenever anybody is not feeling well or they're off or they're sad, she just has this way of coming up and looking at you and she just wants to be right by you. So I'm wondering if there is something, since you communicate with them so clearly and closely, is, the, is there um, a special energetic something that they're transmitting or is it just the way that they are? I mean, it's just, just the way that all animals are behaving. Can they all do this? Um, we all actually, that's a really good question because we all, um, our, our energy signatures stretch way out beyond our fingertips. Um, and so we are all transmitting. We're all like little radios, uh, transistor radios transmitting and, and our energy goes out in waves. Um, and she, let me just see. Um, um, she knew right where you were. She could feel you. Um, uh, and it was like she was playing uh, the, uh, the game um, hotter, hotter, colder, colder. Like as kids, you're, when you're hotter, you're closer to 
something so so if you were if you know if, if so she was feeling hotter hotter colder cold you know colder is is going the wrong direction and hotter hotter is you're you're in you know going in the right you're oh, going the right way you know um, what my dog may have been feeling so yeah so she could feel oh. she was very open to your energy signature she knew that you were and she knew from your husband that you were there she she just she knew um that she she was going to find you there and um and so she just kind of it's almost like and she maybe uh, used her nose to to do some smelling they have a, a way of smelling <clears throat> way before you know they get to where where they're going so uh -huh. she was probably using her physical her physical senses as well as her metaphysical senses yes. <clears throat> to find you yeah well i think you're probably 100 right you know, she could have used some uh telepathy uh you know i visualizing where you where you were um but she was bound and determined she had set her intention she was bound and determined that she was going to find you wow that's incredible yeah it's really nice to have that explained in that way um what kind of animals have you worked with i know you have horses so you're probably very in tune with horses mm -hmm. and uh so I'm just wondering about the types of animals that you have worked with. Sure. Well, my my cat. Let's see. I got to go this way. I guess there's my cat in the background on this, my top of my sofa, <laughs> white, and, white and tan, and she's got a black head. She's a calico. I don't know if you can really see her, but I can see her back yeah. there. <laughs> um, so I've worked with cats, mostly dogs, um, mostly dogs, but cats, horses. Um, I've talked to uh, I've talked to a camel. I've talked to mice. Um, I've talked to fish, mice. birds. Oh wow! Um, llamas, <laughs> uh, goats, sheep. Wow. Um, let's see. What else have I talked to? Yeah, yeah. I think that's. Uh, but I can talk to any any animal. My goodness, what a fun, beautiful way to live your life, Lynn. I mean, you are, you must be in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. It really is. It's like it's giving me chills just thinking about what beautiful work that you are allowing yourself to do and accessing and, and helping some of these beautiful creatures heal and go on themselves to be more integrated in loving their own lives as opposed to being sad or feeling mm -hmm. alone. And, you know, this is like incredible. Um, you. You're welcome. You know, when, um, let's say that there's a, a transition, end of life, um, I'm sure that you have also really handled that aspect of um, mm -hmm animals too and what happens during that process because i know that we had talked about white light um what kind of things do they share do you have an example of that yeah i actually a, a big part of of my practice is end of life if the animals are ready to go do they want help um and they're really wanting to wanting us to release guilt because uh, a lot of times, you know, when we love our animals, we are afraid that maybe we didn't do something right, or we could have caught some ill an illness, or uh, you know, a, a whole gamut of of th reasons for us to feel guilty. And they, what they, the main thing they always want to tell me and tell their people is, please don't feel guilty. Um, uh, um, and so that's that's the big one, but. Um, I can talk to the animals after they have transitioned. the The way it works, the the way it works for me, um, and um, uh, um, so I, and I don't pretend to know everything. That's for sure. But the the my experience um, is when the animals that that everybody humans included, I see um, animal souls as white light, just like human souls. All souls are the same we all in my experience we all go back to the divine 
we're all part of the divine, part of God, whatever is your, you know, belief system, um, source energy. We are all part of of that. And and for me, when I see it, it's white light. That it's means when they passed or when they're in this end stage. Both. Um, yeah. So the white light, and I I see the I see white light around animals and people a lot. And the white light to me is the pure light of of God. Um, to me, the um, the source is a golden light. Um, so I, I don't see God as a, a person, whatever that that right. energy is. Mm -hmm. To me, is is golden light and then around the golden light is pure white light so i can work in we go back to the white light we go right next to source mm -hmm. um and so so i i work in the white light i work in that energy of of source um and so when i talk to the animals um when especially you know a few days or the uh, the, the day of their transition um, there's usually, I can usually always see, um, that there's guides and angels. My dog just came around me and she insists on being here right now. You oh, have yeah. to understand. <laughs> she doesn't normally do that. She knows when I'm busy, she goes into the other room. She's right here and she just wants to be here. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that's I'll okay. Take her, I, Let me take her. Let me take the baby. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, so oh, yeah, she needs to be in. Uh -huh. yeah. So you said now you were talking about um, the white light and you were talking about the, the different aspects of, um, you know, what you're experiencing mm -hmm. and you believe that we're, all, you know, they are part of divine energy, mm -hmm. uh, force, God, whatever you want to call it. So um, are you okay? And so, um, you know, they're right here with us, whatever mm -hmm. we're going through. Because I think what you're saying, Lynn, and I hope I'm not cutting you off, but I realize I did a little bit. So if we can go okay. back, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they have consciousness. Mm -hmm. So they're like us in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, honey. Yeah. You have <laughs> so they have consciousness and they're these beautiful creatures. And I believe that part of their job here is, you know, they're so bonded with us as mm -hmm. um you know, they're so bonded with us and that's all animals, horses. And mm -hmm. I think pigs and I've, I've recently myself um, in the past several months have been very connected to all animals and realizing their significance on this planet, whether it be, you know, like I have a humane mouse trap. I would never think of killing a mouse mm -hmm. anymore. It's like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just that pure essence of love that encapsulates every living thing and that includes you know it includes flowers and plants and trees but you're totally enmeshed in that i i absolutely love that um so what types of things do they share at end of life do you do you have any recall of that um yes yeah, so uh they they know a lot of many times they um, know that their guides are preparing them uh, or their and their angels are preparing them uh, to help uh, to help ease pain, you know, at, at end of life, ease pain. A lot of times they their bodies look like they're in pain and sometimes they are. Um, but a lot of times their bodies look like they're in pain, but they've already, it's like they've already been given um, a shot of uh, Novocaine where they, they aren't actually feeling the pain, but their body is behaving as if it is in pain. Um, their souls are getting ready to leave their bodies. And so there is a, there's a physical thing that happens too when the soul is getting ready to leave the body. Um, and I'm not saying that their animals are not in pain because some are, but a lot of times they're, they appear that they are, but um, that pain, they're not feeling that pain or they may have been in pain and they're not feeling it as, as, mu as much at least anymore. You know, um, some, they, go ahead. They also show me that um, there's always white light and they always ascend. 
um, and they show me sometimes they ascend um, by <clears throat> taking a, a white light elevator. It's always in the light. An elevator, sometimes they climb a ladder, sometimes they take the stairs. Um, it's so, things that I can comprehend. Okay. Um, sometimes the light they just it comes in the light they just go into the light um but mostly it's something that a physical thing that i can comprehend but they're always ascending for the first three days um after after their ascension after they um transition um they are in what i call um the initiation period and there's a period there um that uh that I can't talk to them the first three days. I call it the spiritual car wash um, because to me it looks like a huge white light box that looks like a car wash building. There's not windows, I can't see in. Um, and so all the souls go in into the, um, the car wash and um, I'm not exactly sure what happens in there because I, I'm not allowed um, to see. Because I think it's just it's very very personal and very intimate and it's it's not my turn, right? Um, but what I feel about it is since it's white light, it's pure love, um, and that um, it's a time when um, our souls are uh, recalibrating energy. When we're here on on the planet. Um, there's a it's a lower vibration. There's gravity. We need to stay in our bodies here on Earth. But when we um, transition, we ascend back to the he the heavens, which is a very very high vibration. Right. We feel love here, but not anything like the love that is is in the heavens. Um, it's the vibration is so high that we just we can contain parts of it here when we're we're in our bodies but but we can't it's it's bigger than it's so much bigger than our bodies that that we just can't hold that much mm -hmm. um and so our i i really f i feel that our souls are um the energy is recalibrated so that it's a, a vibrational match with that high high love vibration mm -hmm. um and then after the three days um i see them coming out of that that light and then we can talk to them again wow. um they they let me know a lot of things um um about you know about what it was like uh the, how much they love their people where they are who they've seen um all different different things when when i talk to the animals who have passed do you think that um in your experience, have any of these dogs ever come back as another dog in a, you know, in a mm -hmm. the same, the same creature uh, in soul? Yes, I do. Um, I, I believe in reincarnation. Um, there's just so many things that I've seen that lead, you know, really lead me to believe that that's true. Um, um, yes. And so I have had clients whose um, dogs have come back uh, they you know i think everybody can come back i believe that the, this is the earth school so we we keep coming back to learn more and more things and and grow our soul and you know keep just like school the the more you know the longer we go to school the more we learn different of different subjects um i believe we travel in soul groups so we keep coming back with, with the same souls um, in different, you know, sometimes we're male, sometimes we're female. Um, sometimes dogs come back as, I've seen, um, I, I worked with um, a rabbit who, um, and actually there is an art show, uh, a one man show in um, Chicago at uh, Carrie Sequist Gallery. I've worked with an artist named Adrian Wong. Um, he built, um, uh, I don't know how big it is, 10 foot by 10 foot. I, it's huge, uh, kitty condo. And we had to talk to his rabbit, Omar, who um, showed me that he was several different types of animals. I saw this whole long line of animals. And the fourth animal back 
was a cat because because Adrian wanted to talk to a cat about uh, who had passed about um, about building a kitty condo and what what kinds of things would they like to have in this kitty condo and the fourth animal back in in line uh, stepped out of line and it was a black and white tuxedo cat and I said well Adrian you're you know your rabbit Omar was a cat in a past life and his wife um, got emotionally um, had, had emotion about that and she wondered if perhaps that cat could have been her her cat when she was um, in high school or, or child wow. and it was true that yes that cat wow. was her cat and so we interviewed that her cat um, from her childhood um, to about the kitty condo and uh, so it, yeah so there's a kitty condo that was done it was created um, through animal communication Wow. And we also went to New York City for the Armory show before, just before COVID hit. And I did animal communication readings with Adrian to make art. Um, so yeah, so wow, I might be getting a little off. Oh no, that's perfect. It's a pretty interesting story. <laughs> Isn't that where? Uh, didn't the New York Times do an interview on you as a result of this? They mentioned the New York Times mentioned me. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a result, um, I was also in uh, Chicago Magazine because um, I talked to um, the the uh, this, the writer's cat about why um, he was peeing outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> What would be the reason for that? I'm kind of curious, actually, because um, I thought that it yeah. was it, it needed to be cleaned. That was always my answer. Mm -hmm. what, um, some, yeah, sometimes it is emotional. Um, they get they get angry. They get pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes they get angry, but most of the time they don't like the litter. Most of the time, because they they don't like the smell of it or the texture of it when they clean their paws, um, it tastes bad. Um, oh. So a lot of times it's a matter of getting a litter that um, is not so um, dusty. There's uh, some litters or that are, are- Maybe it's chemicals yeah. too, you know? Mm -hmm. Chemicals in there, yeah, they, they don't like that. So that's what I found is the main reason why um, cats pee outside the box is they don't like the litter. Um, so, uh, I have a couple of things I wanted to ask you here. So, um, about imprinting and how they could be imprinted in your life somehow. Um, you know, I don't know what I, what I wanted to say about that. Um, because in many ways, since you're doing a shamanic journey, we can do all these things with them. I mean, you are their witness, right? I mean, you are actually their witness. You're really helping them along the way with whatever you're helping them with. And, um, you know, you're allowing them to just move through all of the confusion or whatever it is that may be going on. Because I think that there's a lot of myths about animals that they're, um, they're just these uh, being, I don't even know if they would think of them as beings. When they think of animals, I think of something that's almost, um, you know, uh, very, very early and not important, you know, mm -hmm. just not important. They're just these things. And um, I feel it's the opposite is true. I've had a lot of relationships with my animals, like my poppy here. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I know their healing abilities, but I have to tell you, I didn't really experience consciously the true healing factors in an animal until I was probably in my mid 20s. I just knew that I felt good around them and I loved them. And I always had to have when I was in New York City, I had cats. And when we moved further out into Saratoga Springs, New York, then I got dogs but um, I just know that I can't be without one. And mm -hmm. how people could really think that these are just um, a bunch of bones and 
they don't really have any thought process because I do believe that they can think things through. I see it in my animals when I talk to them. They can understand certain words and I don't know if she's understanding the words or if she's understanding the intention that mm -hmm. I'm putting behind the words, but she's definitely very present with me. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you feel about all of that in the midst about them just being these creatures and not really living conscious beings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that um, they are, they're, the animals are definitely conscious beings just as we are. We uh, humans, as humans, we have, uh, we have a tendency to have big egos and, um, and also we have you know, our brains work a little differently. We have, we have a tendency to, to really um, analyze things and try to figure things out and do all this stuff and yeah, the intellectualizing, yeah, intellectualize and all that. And the animals don't do that. They're, they simplify. Um, and that's why, and they are, they are really, it's really easy for them to be in the moment where we are most of the times out of our bodies thinking about something in the future or right. something in the past. They are here um, grounded in, most, most of them are, are really grounded and um, in the moment. And they are very intelligent. They are also very feeling beings. They just like us, they, and then some of us have our feelings turned off. You know, we can't, we don't know one feeling from the other or can't feel or don't know how to feel. Um, but, and that can happen with the animals too. But in general, they have, their hearts are way more open than ours. There's more love flowing through. They have a lot, they have, uh, com they're compassionate. Um, they're, like I said, they're in the moment. Um, they have four legs and we have two. You know, um, but they, the but but they are still just they're they're still in an equal. I feel in a really equal plane with us. Um, you know, yes, our our minds work different. We're able to you know engineer things and make things, and you know that's that's way different than the animals. Um, but intellectually, they are here to to share love. <clears throat> and emotionally, their job is to bring in love, love into the onto the planet, and wow. and love and love is is the main reason for being here. Right, <laughs> you know, love is love is everything. Love is you know, mm -hmm. um, love is all there is. Love really, truly is the biggest component, the biggest thing that we're here to learn and learn wow. about in many all different facets. Um, um geez, I I'm listening to you and I'm just, you know, I'm sort of melting away with all of your uh verbiage and your visions and your experiences. I feel like um, you know, you're a very fortunate person. You have a life that is so connected and it's so connected to spirit. Mm -hmm. It's so connected to spirit, and that's how you can utilize it so well, utilize the the finite part of you to get to the infinite and in all of these mm -hmm. creatures. And how mm -hmm. beautiful is that? Um, Poppy, can I put you down? Okay, because I wanted to look and see if anybody had um, some in interesting responses, but um, okay. So I don't see everybody's names. And so I'm going to ask people to, uh, whatever your responses are, just you can put them in there and I'm going to respond to them later and I'm, I'm going to um, send them also to Lynn. But people are commenting about what a beautiful gift you have um, and that they're very interested in some of the different things that you're saying about animals and um, the un how unusual some of this is. I don't think um, I've ever, re you know, I've, I actually have heard there was a, a great pet psychic in England and I used to, I, maybe you know of her, you've heard of her, but she was fantastic and I can't think of her name, but she had a radio program and I used to listen to her all the time. And then I forget what happened. I think I myself started uh, living and traveling a lot myself in Europe and I, I somehow or other lost contact. And then um, 
I could never find her again. But what I found incredible was that, you know, she could, she was very similar to you, but not in the, in the way that you are, because there was this, um, see, you go into, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. I don't really know if where her connections were, but you go very strongly into the energy, the love, the um, ongoing process of being a, a dog or any kind of an animal and the, their life continues on too, because if they have consciousness, they must have a soul. Mm -hmm. So this is all to me, this is a lot of my work is, is raising consciousness. And I don't think I have to raise Poppy's consciousness because I think she's <laughs> very present and very mm -hmm. there right now. And I think that most of us that have animals probably feel that way. It's like your animal is in the now. So that's mm -hmm. why you can be so connected when something is going on with you and you notice that they're noticing you Mm -hmm. And depending on their behaviors, they're right there with you, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my grandmother, because my grandmother uh, trained horses and she grew up with them. And so we had we had two horses when I was younger for a period of time. And my grandmother used to talk about them like, it, you know, these sentient creatures that were so amazing and so beautiful. And, and she said, you got to be careful with a horse because if you do anything to them that is disruptive to them or disruptive to somebody that they, that is around them, they will never forget it. And she said, you'll know it too. Mm -hmm. And so I used to keep that in mind all the time because she had this ability to look into their eyes and to really connect and I think that's how you're doing it too. You know, you're very strongly connected. You're very passionate about it, but you have such a soft delivery. You know, you're not you're not as um, loud as me. <laughs> but I I want to make sure because oh we're heading into the final time when we can spend together, and I want to just take five minutes to be with um because this is also my last group in my series of nine um sessions that I've had with people during this workshop. But I'm going to ask that Amanda will post below your website. And I think that I'm going to have to, um, I'll probably have to give her that information so it'll come up later on tonight. But is that the best way to connect with you? Yes, correct. My website is is the best way to connect with me. You want to just um, say, do you want to just say what it is right sure. now? Sure, it's it's um, animalspirittalker.com, so www.animalspirittalker.com. Um, I've got a lot of information on my website. I have a lot of blogs that I've written, a lot of stories. My contact page, um, you can contact me through there, uh, set up appointments through there. Um, I have a pre-session questionnaire that once you set up an appointment, it'll prompt you to fill that out with a photo of the animal. I also have a Facebook page um, that I, you know, that animalspirittalker.com, it's Animal Spirit Talker on Facebook. Um, so um, yeah, people can connect with me there also. Wow, lots of really good ways to uh, one-stop shopping and mm -hmm. just really connect with Lynn and, and experience some of your gifts. Um, is there anything that you would like to uh, wrap this up with? Not that we could ever really wrap it up because Lynn, I could talk to you for hours, really. Yeah. I really could. Um, but is there anything else that you would like to share here or that you want people to know? Yeah. Yeah, it's really important to me. I do teach classes also. I, I've been teaching um, once a month um, for the last three months. Uh, well, December um, is my last class here for, well, for the year, because it's December. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'll be teaching again in, in January, you know, next year too, but animal communication. But it's really important to me um, that people know that we all do this. Um, it, it, um, we're all, we are all created with um, the, the, these senses, the metaphysical senses and physical senses. And it, it's about setting our intention. And so, so there's, people will find that there's many times when you actually have connected 
Um, it's, it's becoming aware and being mindful and that the breath, our breath is the most important um, gift that we have. Deep belly breathing, feeling your belly rise and fall. That's, um, and your imagination. Imagination and deep belly breathing um, are the two key things in animal communication. Um, so it really is, um, it really is simple. It's not always easy, but it's simple. The concept is simple. And that we all have the ability to speak to each other telepathically. Um, we were socialized that um, we needed to use our words. But in reality, we talk to each other telepathically all the time. It's just it's being mindful about it and, and just realizing how it feels, what it looks like. Um, you know, when we, when we see things, hear things, um, sense things and feel things that are not in physically tangible, um, that those things are real also. And what is, you know, what is the telepathic um, communication and what is, you know, discerning what is, the, what is the telepathic communication skill and what is my normal mind chatter. And mm. so there is, a, there is a difference in, and I can tell when I'm actually talking to the animal and when I'm just thinking, you know? Right, exactly. So you, know, you have you have this ability to know and to make that discernment, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, which is reminding me a little bit of like um, dealing with the conditioned self and your authentic self. You have mm -hmm. to know how to separate those two, mm -hmm. and um, because it's very sneaky, I would think mm -hmm. that it can be very sneaky with you too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's being open to speak, talking to our guidance, you know, our, our higher selves, our angels and guides, whatever, you know, whatever, however you want to put that, you know, whatever resonates, whatever words resonate. But right. Um, right. there's way more to us than, than you know, meets the eye that, that the unseen world is huge and they, they you know, and our guides want to, to help us. There's guidance all over um, the universe in the unseen world that really wants to help us. Um, it's a matter of asking for that help. So true. Well, I'm so glad that you've been here, Lynn. Um, it's been, you've been a delight. You're a source of information. You're a source of love and your generosity with our sentient creatures is just not to be, you know, underestimated. And um, so, uh, I hope someday soon that I'm going to be able to work with you because I really want you mm -hmm. to, um, first of all, experience my poppy in another way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I want other people to know that there is a source for them too. If they're feeling conflicted about anything with their special animal. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like I said, I hate the word animal, but with their special sentient mm -hmm. being and, mm -hmm. um, if there's anything in particular that they would really like to be um, thinking more about, this might be the perfect answer. So um, thank you, Lynn, really thank you. And I have some of these things posted for you. The article, the Times, new, uh, the Times article and the, um, is it Chicago Tribune? Um, the Chicago Magazine. Chicago mm -hmm. Magazine. Okay. Both of those have articles and you've got those on your website, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of that is there too. And plus you're going to be, te you are teaching classes and I'm assuming they're going to be continuing mm -hmm. after the first of the year. Correct. Um, yeah. Now that information will be on my website. I also have um, on my website, I have a free report. Um, what 10 of my favorite um, totem animals want to tell you if that's not the actual name I can never remember the what I named it um, but it's a free report which also puts you on my newsletter um, and I send out a newsletter once a month and it it has information about well stories but um, it also has information about if I'm teaching or you know what 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 is happening um, and so I've been doing a lot of teaching online, uh, especially with the, with the COVID now and not traveling, but, um, and I'm finding that, um, that online works really, really well yeah. to, to bring yeah. us together and, and mm -hmm. uh, do classes online. So yeah. 
what I've been doing and it's been very successful. So yes, I'm happy mm -hmm. for you. I know that I find that working online virtually is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, we've all benefited from you and I'm going to say that I will see you later. I won't say goodbye because I'm looking forward to seeing you at some other point in time. Thank you. Me too, Veronica. Thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all, all the people that um, are listening or, or watching. Um, I really appreciate being able to share what I know. Oh, you're um, more than welcome. And um, in order for you to click, click off, I think there is a thing that tells you to get out of the broadcast when you're ready mm -hmm. uh, just to let you know. And um, be well, Lynn. Take good thank care you. of yourself, those lovely creatures. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. Have a great day. All right. All right. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye. Well, everybody, that really was, I'm going out with a bang, you know, because I was, um, I, like I mentioned before, I had a conversation with her prior to this and um, I was very, very happy to be able to know that she was going to be able to do this for me today. So I hope you all benefited from it. I would love it if you could just um, mention in the comments exactly how you feel about this whole process because we're ending with this today, but it's been nine days that I have been um, coming to you through all of these waves that have come through the universe to go into your computer or your smartphone or your iPad or whatever instrument that you're using to deliver my messages of raising consciousness, of uh, healing, creating healing for everybody, and especially for our inner child, our wounded inner child, because we all deserve to live better and healthier and fuller and richer lives. Um, it is not too late to go in and register and be able to view all of these um, sessions that we've had these past nine days. Now, the last one that I just had, which is with Lynn Schuster, the spirit animal talker, will probably not come out for another hour. But in the meantime, you could register and you could have access to all these. They're coming down. Um, as of midnight tonight, in the very latest tomorrow morning, and then they're going away. And the um, there is an opportunity right now until midnight that I am offering a very big discount for people that really want to change. They want to heal in community, but they want to change their lives in a way that it works for them in a way that they don't have to go around feeling like they're carrying the weight of their feelings, the weight of their wounds. And we want to help work that through, release it. And with my program, which is described in the um, the registration page gives you an idea. And if you wanted to know more about the program um, after you register, then I could you could PM me and um, or actually DM me. I don't know why I said PM, but DM me, direct message me in Messenger, and I could send you information further on my program, which has been devised as a result of all that I have been through, all of my training, my skills, as well as my commitment to being a spiritual person living in this physical world and how I've navigated my healing, how I've helped others navigate their healings. There are wonderful testimonials that are on the registration page and which is also located um, at the top of the Sacred Alchemy After Loss. It's on there somewhere if you want to go in and um, register and then view that as well. I mean, I think you can, you can go in and view it without registering. But the point is, is that if you want more, you, could, you would have to go on to my other page, which you'd have to request from me, and I would send that to you in Messenger or we could schedule a call. And if you want to do that, I would be more than happy to talk about that because I want those that are here 
that are listening to this, that are viewing this, to know that there's no mistaking why you're here. You are here because there was something about what you saw that resonated with you, something about what you saw that I was doing that kept you going through this program, something about what you saw that you felt energetically that it was right for you, because this is a group of empathic people. This is a group of wholehearted individuals that are very dedicated to their own healing, that want to heal their inner child, that want to know how to navigate between the conditioned self, which is your wounded inner child, and your authentic self, how to live more in your loving, wise adult, right? How to live more in that place and make decisions from that place and how to know when you're in your conditioned self and that it's thwarting you because there is a very tricky part to the conditioned self. And I've said this many times, it bears repeating because it is something that we all have to learn to navigate and we all have to learn how to do this. And sometimes, you know, when you think you can do something by yourself, it only works and goes so far. And that's why this healing community, which I keep this healing community within a certain number because I want everybody to be able to have the opportunity to be able to glean the love and the nurturance from everybody in this community. And that is every week. So every week you have this nurturing place to go and the testimonials are from some of these people and they tell you specifically what they've gained from this. So um, I've had tons of training, but it's the training is wonderful. And yes, it has taken me to new heights in terms of my ability to share these gifts and help others heal, but it's also my connection to spirit. So I really don't want to see anybody that truly wants to change and wants to have their lives in a bigger way and in a more peaceful way and to thrive. Perhaps it is a business that you want to begin. Perhaps there is something that you want to do with your business that you haven't been able to accomplish. Something is stopping you. Where are you stuck in your life? Perhaps it has to do with your relationship. Perhaps you have endured very, very potent physical loss in your life, a very potent physical loss in your life. And you don't know how to navigate that or you don't know how to work any of that through. And like I've said, with all these losses, it's not like there's a paintbrush that makes them all go away magically. But through this work, you will not be imprisoned by them anymore. And you will experience the energy of the healing. And when that energy comes through, your creative self starts to come through and nobody knows, not even I, what's going to happen when all of this energy is allowed to come through, that you're permitting it to come through, that you're dropping the veils. And again, like I've said, I don't believe in ripping off the Band-Aid. I believe that this should be a gentle process, and it is, and it's a loving process. So I want to thank you all for being here. It's been incredibly wonderful. It's been invigorating for me because I love sharing some of these things, but we also know that we can't do all of these things alone. We can do some of these things, but to do them with a community of wise individuals who are already on this path and who know what it is to feel and that who understand and care about what you're feeling is truly a gift. You do not find this everywhere. And um, I know that this is a very unique way that I am doing this gift, but it's uniquely mine. And if people can benefit from it, that's why I'm doing it. Okay. That's why I'm doing it. I love sharing this information. I love helping others heal. Thank you again. And um, hey, give me a call. <laughs> Connect with me you know, direct message me and um, let me know what you're thinking. Because as of midnight tonight or the latest tomorrow morning, um, these videos will come down. So you will not have access to them anymore. But the, uh, the um, 
what I'm offering is going to be discounted until uh, midnight tonight. So if you're interested, now is the time to consider it. Now is the time to consider it, consider, consider working with me in sacred alchemy after loss. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a really good evening, a rest of your day, and um, be well. Bye-bye now. Let me know your takeaways. Bye.